Hello everyone, welcome to the Renewable Energy Study Group. In the today's third session of the financial modeling of a solar power plant, we will going to calculate the taxable income and the overall tax calculation over here. Before you start watching this video, I will recommend to go for the part number one and part number second of the financial modeling of 10 kilowatt of the solar system. The link of the part number one and two has been given in the description box. Just check it over there. So basically in this today's session we will going to calculate the what is the basic tax we need to pay to the government after calculation of the taxable income by considering all the requisite parameters. In short period of a time I just summarize in the part number one we have considered the operational parameter or the parameter which are required actually for formulate the financial modeling that we have been discussed. So in this case, we discuss the operational financial levels, then the project fund, electricity pricing, operation and maintenance parameter, depreciation rates and the taxation percentage we have discussed. In the part number second of the financial modeling, we have discussed regarding the profit and loss account statement. So in this case, we have considered what is total revenue generating from the solar system and what is the total expenses are there in a solar system. According to that, we have estimated what is the profit before tax amount will be there in this typical case study. In this lecture, we are going to go for the tax calculation over here. Before we proceed for calculation of taxable income, we just copy the upper years that we have calculated in the step number second. So basically in this year row, that is we are clicking over the first cell equal to, we need to copy, go to going to the step number second over here, 31st of March 2020. Likewise, we have copied this date. Just select this typical sale over here, pull the sale up to the 25 years of the span and you can copy the upper row directly over here. Next we will going to proceed for the profit before tax. Whenever we are calculating the taxable income, we have to take a reference of profit before tax that we are earning. In the step number second, we have discussed regarding the profit and loss account statement. So here we have discussed the profit before tax statement over here actually. So similarly, we need to copy this particular sale over here. So write equal to and copy this sale over here and enter. Pull this typical sale up to the 25 years of the span and you can copy the upper row over here actually. Then we need to proceed for the written down value calculation over here. So typically in the first financial year calculation, whatever the total investment we are doing in the solar system, that is nothing but the written down value of a project for the first financial year. Likewise, in the subsequent financial year, deducting the annual depreciation, we can calculate the written down value over here. So typically written down value in the first financial year is equals to total investment that we are doing. So we just go on step number one and we select the total project fund that we are investing in the project actually. So this is the project cost we have taken 5,20,000. We are copying this particular thing over here and enter. Then we have to focus on WDV annual depreciation. Basically as we are doing the financial modeling for the solar power plant, in solar power plant in India actually, typically, it has been promoted in the commercial and the industrial sector by giving them the higher rate of depreciation we call it as the benefit of accelerated depreciation. Instead of depreciating the asset at a normal rate, we can depreciate the solar power plant with an accelerated rate we can say that is a 40% rate has been decided under the solar policy of central government. So typically by considering this, we can calculate what is the annual depreciation we can get in the subsequent financial years over here. So basically the annual depreciation we can calculate basically equal to what is the written down value of a project multiplied by the rate of depreciation. So we just go on step number one. So here we have considered the annual depreciation with accelerated depreciation rate from the 1st of April 2017 the rate has been applied from the central government. So we just select this 40% of accelerated rate of depreciation. 40% rate will be common for all the calculation. We have to fix this value with the help of this dollar like symbol over here. So with this we can fix the particular sale over here and simultaneously we can calculate the subsequent calculations over here. So basically we can calculate the annual depreciation in the first financial year is 2,8,000 rupees that we are getting by this formula over here. 
whenever we need to calculate the written down value for the next financial year is equal to nothing but equal to written down value of the earlier financial year minus annual depreciation of the last financial year and enter over here. So likewise we can calculate the written down value for the 25 span of the year actually just pull this typical cell up to the 25 years of the span and just go on step number third that is WDV annual depreciation just pull this particular cell also the formula is automatically be getting applied in the excel sheet over here. So like this we can we came to know actually in the second financial year written down value of a project is 3 lakh 12 thousand and the annual depreciation will be 1 lakh 24 thousand and 800 rupees over here. Subsequently for 25 years of the span we can calculate what is the written down value of a project will be and what is the annual depreciation of the asset will be. Once we have deal with these three parameter we have to calculate the taxable income. Taxable income is nothing but profit before tax minus annual depreciation in the case equal to. So likewise we came to know in the first financial year there is a zero taxable income will be there. Just pull the particular cell in the span of 25 years and you can calculate what is the taxable income for second, third, fourth and fifth financial years over here. Once we have done with this taxable income, we need to proceed for net tax payable to the government actually. First tax is the applicable is the corporate tax. Basically the corporate tax will be liable on the taxable income basically. So whenever we have to calculate the corporate tax, we formulate a formula like that equal to taxable income of the financial year multiplied by rate of the corporate tax that we have to consider. We just go on step number one and from that we select the sale of the corporate tax percentage that we have taken. It is 25 percentage. So we have selected this sale. Corporate tax percentage will be same for all the subsequent calculation. We have to fix the 25% uh, value with the help of this dollar like symbol over here and enter. So likewise this corporate tax will be just copied over here. Just pull the sale up to the 25 years of the span and you can easily calculate the corporate tax to be paid with each, each subsequent financial years over here. Then we need to proceed for calculation of minimum alternate tax. Basically the minimum alternate tax will be liable on the profit before tax. In a sense is what in some companies they were showing that taxable income is very less and because of that they are not liable to pay the corporate tax actually over here. So that is why to avoid these measures use of the uh, policy has been uh, framed by the central government. So company though the taxable income is lesser but you have to pay the minimum alternate tax on the profit before tax. Whosoever tax actually it is a corporate tax or the minimum alternate should internet tax should be maximum that maximum tax we have to pay to the central government over here. So in the first financial year when we see the value of corporate tax value will be zero over here but the minimum alternate tax would be paid on profit before tax just select the sale of the profit before tax multiplied by the percentage of minimum alternate tax we have to take it over here just go on step number one and select the percentage of minimum alternate tax as 18 percent over here 18 percent value will be same for all the calculation so fix it with the help of this symbol and enter pull the sale up to the span of the 25 years and you can calculate the minimum alternate tax over here actually finally which tax we have to pay to the government that is the maximum tax out of the corporate tax or the minimum alternate tax that we have to pay to the government actually. So we are activating the command over here that is a maximum command in a bracket maximum out of both of to sell either corporate or the minimum alternate tax enter. So in the first financial year we have to pay the minimum alternate tax in the second financial year again minimum alternate tax third financial year again minimum alternate tax fourth financial year and the up to the fifth financial year onward we are paying the corporate tax over here because the percentage of minimum alternate tax or the value of the minimum alternate tax we are paying on the fifth financial onward will be lesser than the corporate tax and we are start paying the corporate tax from fifth financial year in this case study just pull the sale up to the 25 years of the span and you can calculate which, which exact tax we are paying to the government out of the both of the two tax which has been available over here. 
so like this we can calculate which taxable income and how much taxable income we have to calculate what is the annual depreciation we have to consider what is the corporate tax and minimum alternate tax we need to consider over here and what exact tax we have to uh, tax we have to pay to the central government under this policy over here thank you for the watching the video and thank you for your time